Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the orientation session for AFM for December 2024 exam. Uh, because my AFM paper is more in English, less in Hindi, so I will be preferring taking the orientation in English, also assuming that some students want me to take this orientation in English. So here we start. What are we going to do in the orientation is some line items. I'll show the agenda to all of you first. We are going to discuss seven line items. We are going to know about the paper, the paper pattern, how it really looks. Means I'll show you some screenshots of the sample papers also. Then what is the syllabus? What are these professional skill marks? What is the global result? What is our result? what all the class covers and at the end what is the calendar which we will be following for the quarter so let me begin with the paper pattern first why paper pattern before the syllabus so that the gist of p level papers is enjoyed by everyone now with p level papers it's all subjective paper you do not have any objective type questions here no mcqs here and you will have only two sections Section A, Section B. Section A will have only one question that will have 50 marks. Now, this is the trouble factor for most of the students under AFM because the question is extremely long. Requirements are too many. But there is something which is new here. If you all have done any of your P-level papers, then you will already be knowing what professional skill marks are but here the professional skill marks are 20. In total the paper has got 20 professional skill marks. What are these I'll discuss now but as of now you just need to focus on the paper pattern. Section A it has got only one question of 50 marks. Out of these 50 marks 10 marks are professional skill marks. That means you are going to hit the technical part only for 40 marks. Whatever you have pre-read, whatever you have prepared across the quarter, only 40 marks is going to be tested under question number one. Remaining 10 marks is related to the professional skills. Now, what about section B? Section B has got two questions. 25 marks, 25 marks. And on each question, you have got five professional skill marks allocated. So professional skill marks are question number one, 10 marks. Question number two, five marks. Question number three, five marks. This is how 20 marks of professional skills are distributed across the whole paper. It won't be wrong if we say that out of 100, 80 is for your preparation. And 20 is for presentation. So for you, the presentation part becomes extremely important, extremely important. So I'll discuss what these uh, professional skill marks are in the later slides. But uh, let me first show you how the paper and the requirements look like. So for AFM, let me show you some sample papers. I have Pick the sample papers from the practice platform, ACCA's website and the practice platform. This is June 2023 paper. This is how the paper looks like. It will have some exhibits. Exhibit number one, exhibit number two, exhibit number three, and there will be requirements. And when you will click on the requirements, you will get these many requirements. So don't worry. If the question is of 50 marks, 10 marks goes for professional skills, 40 marks is related to your technical knowledge. And these 40 marks is not going to be a single question or a single part. It will have part A, part B, part C, many sub, sub parts or many subdivisions of the question. That means the requirements will be small. So don't worry on that, that I'm going to hit a 40 marker question. No, that's not going to happen. It's going to be a breakup of requirements. Now carefully watch this. Part number A, it talks about some discussion. Part B talks about preparing a report. So report writing is favorite for the examiner, specifically in APM, be it SBL, be it AFM. 
you should know the format of a report. For the format of a report, specifically, some professional marks are allocated. So report writing, extremely crucial. There you need to calculate certain things. There you need to estimate certain things. Then you need to compare certain things. Advise the board. Do some discussion on the credibility of the CEO's alternative suggestion. That means if you see the A, B, C, D, E or whatever parts, they will be a mix of calculation as well as discussion. AFM paper is not going to be a 100% practical paper. No, not at all. Approximately 30 to 40 marks are devoted to calculations and 30 to 40 marks are devoted for discussions, writing, advising, critically examining. And this is where you are going to secure your professional marks also. If the question asks you to advise, did you advise the board? If you forgot to advise, you discussed well, but you forgot to advise, you are most likely going to lose your professional skill marks. So the requirement of the question has to be understood very well. So this was 50 marker question. Then let's go and move to question number two. This is a 25 marker question with five professional skill marks. Here also, you will see some estimation, but part A is about a discussion. Then part C is again about a discussion. So amongst this A, B, C, you will have 10 marks for discussion, 10 marks for calculation. Again, the paper is 50-50% here. And then question number three, evaluate the suitability of investment proposal, including in your analysis, a discussion. So you have to calculate, you have to discuss, and then you have to give if the investment proposal is suitable or not. Then you have professional marks on this. Part B is all about discussion. So point proved. The paper is 50% calculative, 50% discursive. Out of 80 marks, 35 to 40 marks are allocated to calculations and remaining marks are allocated to discussions. 20 marks are professional skill marks. Now, let me show you another sample. So this is your AFM pre-March 2024 mock exam. Number one, first question, again, discuss, prepare a report, then discuss. So discuss, discuss is at too many places. Question number two, discuss, then estimate and comment. The second line says comment on the answers obtained. That means in calculations also, comments are to be given. Then the third question, calculate. Show all relevant calculations and comment on your results. Again, comment. Part B, discuss the advantages and disadvantages. Again, discussion. This is pre-March mock. So till now, let me just summarize what you have seen till now. Number one, the paper is of 100 marks divided into two sections, section A, section B. Section A, 50 marks. Section B, 50 marks. Section A will have only one question of 50 marks. Out of this 50 marks, 10 marks are professional skill marks and remaining 40 is for your knowledge. On section B, you have two questions of 25 and 25 marks each. Out of this 25, 20 marks are for your technical knowledge and 5 marks are for professional skills. Am I clear till here? Any confusion on the paper pattern? And 20 marks of professional skills. Now what professional skills are? That I'm going to explain. Till here, everything clear to everyone? Tell me. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Cool. Now let's go for professional skills. What are these professional skills? If you are going to handle the professional skills for the first time, and if you have given only SBR till now, then there is a bigger trouble for you. Why? Because in SBR, the professional skills are only for four marks, but here you are going to deal with 20 professional skill marks. 
Now, what are these professional skills? So, professional skills are okay. They were saying, ma'am, given triple play. Great. <laughs> that means you know what professional skill marks are. So, let me introduce to others. You are going to be analyzed on four pillars of professional skills. Basically, ACC wants you all to portray some professionalism when you write, when you speak, when you discuss, or when you evaluate. This professionalism is being prepared by these professional skills. You are getting prepared for the corporate real world. And these relate to that preparation only. The first professional skill which they want to check is communication. Now, does that mean grammar? No, not at all. If the question asks you to write a report, you have to use the format of a report. That is the professional skill of giving what the examiner wants. Means communicating in the manner in which the examiner has asked you to communicate. If the examiner wants, prepare a presentation slide. AFM doesn't ask that, SBL asks that. Then it has to be in presentation slide. So when you will be working in your corporate worlds, if the client wants a document in the form of a report, then it has to be in the form of a report. If the client asks in the form of a briefing note, it has to be in the format of a briefing note. If he wants a letter, then it has to be in the letter format. So that's the first basic rule of communication that follow the format which is asked by the question. Consider that it is a client. Then second thing, what are you communicating? Talk relevant. Do not talk about unnecessary points. When the question asks you about the limitations of a particular thing, do not start giving advantages. That's a wastage of time for the reader. He just wants the limitations. Limitations do not include advantages or the benefits. So write relevant, write to the point, do not give too much detail. Be concise and to the point. When you are writing relevant, then your relevance should also be properly framed. Means the most important part should come first. The least important part should be at the end. So this will require a lot of practice, a lot of writing practice, a lot of thinking practice. You will have to, uh, what should I say? Uh, we practice essay writing. It's something like that. You need to practice composing. Composing answers, composing paragraphs. So composition has to be practiced. Then comes analysis and evaluation. The second skill, what is this? When the question says, you have to demonstrate professional skill of analysis and evaluation. Or the question asks you to analyze and evaluate. That means obviously it wants to check your skill, professional skill. Then the analysis must be clearly shown. Now, how will you show analysis? By going deeper into the numbers, by interpreting some results which are not directly coming out of the question's case. And then analyzing two of the options or three of the options which are given in the case and then giving a suggestion that this should be opted. That is evaluating. So analysis results in evaluation or you can say evaluation will come only after analysis. You will analyze different projects first. Then you will evaluate if these all can be taken or only one can be taken or none of the above can be taken. That is evaluation. Again, this has to be indirectly shown. Not that giving a heading that I am analyzing and then you start analyzing. No, this is not the way of analysis or showing this professional skill. Then comes skepticism. This is having a questioning mind. In all the cases, when this skill will require to be demonstrated, you will definitely find any of the officers of the company who will be literally claiming a lot. The CEO directly coming up on stage and announcing that the company has made wonderful results this year. So you have to be skeptical. You have to show that you are not taking his statements on face value. That question on his claims why you think that his claims may be wrong? This discussion must be there in your answer to show skepticism professional skill. 
if you do not say anywhere, you do not discuss it anywhere, that the claims of the CEO seem to be incorrect or seem to be correct, that means you lost on skepticism. You took his words on his face value that, okay, whatever he is saying, it's correct. Neither you tried to bring in evidence to support it or you didn't try to bring in the evidence at it. So you have to show that I can question. That's skepticism. Then the fourth skill is commercial acumen. Most of the students are literally confused on this. What is commercial acumen? Having a business mind is commercial acumen. So I was giving a very simple example in yesterday's orientation also. I'll try to make you all understand using that example only because that's the simplest you all can do. Now let's suppose the company is saying that because of COVID, we are losing business. It asks the finance team, please go for a cost control. Now, how will you achieve that cost control? You need to apply that commercial acumen here. There are many ways to do that. The simplest can be start firing the employees. Start closing down the business. Start closing down some of the departments. But commercial acumen will say, let's go for work from home for employees. If half of the teams... They work from home. Remaining half can come to office on Monday and Tuesday. Then on Wednesday and Thursday, that work from home teams can come to office and work. So why not cut down the size of the office space? It will save us some money. So rather than taking four floors on rent for the office, let's scale it down to two floors. That's commercial acumen. Let's not fire employees. Let's have a meeting and tell them that the business is going with a tougher time phase. That's why we are not able to give you increments this year. That can be one of the ideas. It's not very easy for any business to kick off its employees because some of the sentiments of customers also do lie with the policies of every company. How the company treats its people, its human resources. Everybody knows this. I mean, we have a latest example where the employees were treated extremely in a bad manner. Okay, it's bad news. There were many news, many news that they are selling courses like anything. Their salesmen are being treated like anything. They are being made to work under so much pressure that it's very difficult for anyone to work for them. This started giving a bad name to Bajus and gradually the tactics which they used to sell their courses, it started coming on the ground in front of everyone and lost all the confidence. The investor lost all the confidence in the uh, company, in the people who are running the company. So commercial acumen means giving solutions considering the impact of your actions on the affected parties or the stakeholders. Basically, that's commercial acumen, having that business sense. I mean, you cannot just go and take decisions like anything. It has to be commercially viable decision, commercially viable suggestion. That's the idea. That's commercial acumen because this paper or the P-level prepares you for senior positions. You need to be very careful what you are advising, what you are saying, and what cost control systems you are giving. It cannot be on the cost of a lot of employees. Some companies did that. Really, some companies did that. So for two years, they fired two, three senior most people who were at 50, 50 lakhs of package, saving two crores directly. The department saved two crores because some of the senior position people of 50-50 lakhs were fired. They were asked to resign. Now, after two years, when the business started picking up, they had to hire all these four employees at 80-80 lakhs of package or 1-1 one, one CR of package. So not at all a good idea what was done during that time. And these are the lessons which as a leader, you need to consider. 
that if by any chance the business picks up again, will you get the right fit man at a lower cost? Or maybe you save only 50 lakhs and then later on you have to hire someone at 1 CR plus. So consider these points and take decision. That's commercial acumen. Commercial acumen will come when you start watching some of the business videos, maybe some of the case histories, maybe some of the economic times cases. So this over commercial acumen doesn't come through reading any book or through and talking to anyone. It comes gradually. You need to start exercising on your commercial. The suggestions which you give should be practically possible. There are cultural differences between two teams. And a lot of clashes are happening. Now the CEO is worried how this clash should be handled. So your commercial acumen test would be what solution you give here. What suggestions you give here. So I will suggest you can keep their floors separate. So that the point of friction doesn't arise. You can talk to them. You can keep more team building exercises for them so that they start gelling each other, gelling with each other. These can be some of the ideas. And if you come up and say that fire someone who is just creating a lot of trouble, create an example in front of the employees. This is not a good example of showing commercial acumen. Business leaders do not do that. So is it clear what the examiner wants from you? A solution which is viable, which is doable in the present world. It's not imaginary. Don't try to be a new creator of any business line. No, not needed. Do something which you have actually seen somewhere. Which you have seen that yes, it does work. It happens. With the hybrid system of working, yes, cost cutting can happen. So when I was working with EY back in 2008, I remember for initial six, seven months, we used to uh, get bistlery bottles, water bottles on a daily basis. I mean, there were small bottles. They were kept on the pantry side. We used to pick up a bottle and then used to drink water. But when the Great Depression at that time came, after six, seven months, we were given some bottles which were washed every week. And we used to fill those bottles through the water coolers and used to have that bottle with everybody's name. So we had to write our names on those bottles with permanent markers. <laughs> Good idea. Why to waste so many bottles? Because there were many cases where people used to open a small bislary bottle, just had two sips of water and then used to throw the rest of the piece of water or, and the bottle, both. So yes, that started happening. Then the mugs were being introduced. You can have your own mug of coffee. The pantry boy can wash it rather than consuming uh, cups all the time. So these are some of the ideas where some cost cutting can be done. You have to monitor those cost cutting uh, tactics which the businesses have used. So be alert on this skill. That's the only solution you can do. Are all these skills clear? I will make you practice how to portray them. Don't worry. But have you understood what these are? Clear to everyone? Guys, clear to everyone? Okay. Okay. My pace is okay. My pace is okay. Do you want me to start speaking in Hindi? Good to go? Okay. Okay. Let's move ahead. Now let's come back to the paper. Enough of general gyan I have given you. Now let's talk specific. Is this syllabus very long? Is this syllabus very short? The syllabus is manageable, I'll say. The syllabus is of 14 chapters. Chapter number 15 relates to professional skills, which I just explained. Then chapter number 16 is nothing. Chapter number 17 is nothing. You have 14 chapters to do. And the best part is, out of these 14, 7 are calculative, 7 are theoretical, which will prepare you for the discursive part of the paper. For example, chapter number 1, 
completely theoretical. It will be in a discursive form. Then chapter number four, chapter number five, then chapter number, okay. So not completely, but chapter number 13, 12, 14. These will have 60% discussion matter. I mean, you will be discussing more as compared to calculating things. So again, 50 to 40% is on the theory part and 50% is on the calculative part. Syllabus is not really too much, not really huge. Now, let's move ahead. How is the AFM result? So the result is not really good, but okay, okay, I'll say. It's okay, okay. Surprisingly, with not too long syllabus, huh, yes, Dev, it's not as bad as AAA and APM, but still, I'll feel, I feel that this is somewhere lesser. I'll tell you the reason here. Calculative part, risk management becomes a trouble point for students where they have to do hedging, where they have to handle the derivatives, where they have to handle the options. One is that pain point area. Number two is, again, the writing part. So these two hit together, and then the result comes out to be 46% or 48%. It doesn't even touch 50%. So these are the two areas you have to work more. One, the risk management part, where hedging will be done, derivatives will be handled. And number two, Handling theory, writing professionally since inception. That we'll practice. I'll tell you how we'll practice. Now, this is the AFM result. We got these star students for June 2024 exam. Why only five students? Because only eight students gave the exam out of, again, a batch of 15, 16. Unfortunately, uh, we have seen many students don't give the exams for the quarter when they enroll. They enroll for... June, they will sit in September. So that's the problem. And here in your batch also, when you are seeing 15 students or maybe some more students get added to it, only 60% will really sit in the exam. So ensure that you complete your qualification early. Don't keep on waiting to sit and then pass. Do pass. These all five passed in one shot. So, uh, thank you, Dave, but I do not have a very big batch for AFM. It's approximately 15 to 16, 17 students every time. But the students sitting in the exam is just, again, the 50% of it. Anyways, now let's understand the class system, how the classes will go. So, it's a complicated system, I'll say. Number one, you will get the full course access means all the chapters are covered. There is nothing selective. All the chapters are covered plus 15 exam kit questions are also recorded so that you understand how to deal with a particular question when it is there in the exam. Now for two quarters, if required, understand this system very carefully because of this only majority of my students are not sitting in the exam. They enroll for a particular quarter. If they do not sit in the exam, if they do not clear the exam, we give them the access in the next quarter without any additional charge. That is why they get motivated that, okay, not June, let me sit in September, any which ways the classes are there with me. So this habit actually promotes them not to give the exam in first quarter. But give it in time for yourself, not for my class. So we support you for the next quarter because yes, some unforeseen circumstances may arise, you may fall ill, you may not clear the exam. Yes, there are two, three students who failed. Somebody failed at 49, somebody failed at 47. So I don't want them to invest again 15,000 to see the classes again. But mocks and tests can be given only once. You give it in the first quarter or you give it in the second quarter because they remain the same. It doesn't make any sense that you give the same tests again and again. I check them again and again. The second time, it will not be an honest review. That's the reason. So you can give the tests only once. But the class access, you can take again if you do not give the exam or if you do not clear the exam. We won't charge anything extra for that. Number two, I have a habit of using notes while teaching because the book is full of information. The book is flooded with information. So I have a habit of summarizing that information and giving the gist of the topic to the students through notes. 
means the PPTs which are run in the class. So you will get these notes, you can download them, you can get them print, printed and then if you want to add on something to it, you can always do that on the hard copies. Because what I do is, I give only the keywords so that I am also not creating another textbook for you. So you come out of Kaplan and then you are trapped in my notes because they are equally in detail. That I don't do. I have created something like pocket notes, you can say. So you will find a topic there. If the topic is tough, it will be explained in two, three lines. So that when you see, you immediately get to know, okay, okay, this was that topic. But when I'm teaching, I'm giving all the details. So the details are in my teaching and the major part is under the notes. Still, if you want to add on something, you can always do that. Then comes the sessions. So this time we have increased the sessions, seeing the result. Yes, it does motivate me that out of eight students, five students passed when the sessions were four till last quarter. So now I have doubled them up so that I can extend more support to you all. But I won't lie to you all. I have a limited bandwidth. Four sessions will be taken by me and four sessions will be taken by an expert tutor. Not me, an expert tutor, an ACCA member, seven, eight years of experience. So he will be taking four sessions. I will be taking four sessions. My focus mainly will be on risk management and theory. His focus will be on investment appraisal, then business valuation, not getting the answer. So on the simpler areas, he will help you. And on the tougher areas, I would like to pitch in. Then comes tests. They have also got in increased now. We'll go ahead with total eight tests. Four tests I will be checking and I will ensure that you are getting some report writing on those tests some theory writing part in those tests so that I can see what you're writing, how you are writing, is the professional skill displayed. And four will be only on calculative part. See, because AFM is a paper where we need to keep a balance between the calculative as well as the discursive part. Discursive part, I need to check on a one-on-one -on -one basis because you all will be making different mistakes. I cannot say that you go and mug up the whole study text even the theory comes related to the court uh, case, the case which is there in the uh, exam. I wanted to say quoted case. So the theory also will be linked to it. You cannot mug it up. You will have to link it. How to link it, how to present it, that I will train you in the live sessions. And then based on that, you will give the tests, which I will check. So we'll keep a system of regular tests of writing also with my individual assessment and I will check it, nobody else. Then four tests will be there on the LMS, our learning management system. They will be auto check tests. Now, what is special in these tests? You can find them on Study Hub also. No, you can't find them on Study Hub. Study Hub will have a complete question. You will have to check one on one numbers over there. My auto check tests will be different. How? You will do the calculations on Excel and my question specifically will ask about some numbers which you will calculate and then you will put it in the system. Then the system will give you marks according to what you have punched in. As per the marking scheme, for example, you are calculating the net present value. Present value calculation involves tax allowable depreciation calculation. You will do that calculation because it separately carries two to three marks. My question will be, what is the tax allowable depreciation at year four? You will punch in the numbers and immediately you will get two marks. Dave, I didn't get your point. If you are talking about the complete solution that will always be given to you once your test is submitted. Don't worry. Huh. Something like that, Dave, but unfortunately you do not have that option under P level. I mean, there is no system where you can just put your calculated numbers and get it checked. I have created those tests. 
So I have created because that is what I wanted to give you an example on. Let's suppose it is an NPV calculation. NPV calculation, inflation number has to be taken. So sales has to be inflated, let's suppose. Year 3 sales, inflated sales. I will have a question. What is the value of your inflated sale of year 3? Now you have calculated, immediately punch in there. If the answer is correct, you will immediately get one mark. If your answer is incorrect, you get a zero mark. So this will happen in the exam also. If your individual values are correct, you keep on getting the step marks. So I have created the tests which have these step marks. Okay, so you, would don't, you won't find them on Study Hub also. Study Hub is not built on that basis. What I have tried to do is, I know my students, I know my classes. <laughs> so that is why I have created these tests that let me make them an expert on the practical area first and side by side I'll keep on taking the tests on discursive part. Okay, am I clear how these auto check tests will work? Got it clear? Okay. Okay, cool. Then comes mocks. So I have always been emphasizing that mocks are very important and from this time what we are going to do is we are going to conduct mocks on our LMS our learning management system where the mocks will close in three hours. So till last quarter, last to last quarter, what I was noticing was the students were writing 10 pages, 15 pages in the word document when they were commenting or discussing any part of the question. I mean, it was going in an unlimited manner. And I was wondering how come a student can calculate so much and then write so much in three hours. He read the question. He read the requirements, he did the calculations and he wrote so much in three hours. I did my SBR exam. I could not attempt that. I attempted only 75 marks or 78 marks of paper because I was doing it in a fun way. Even then you need some time to read and absorb the information of the question. There are so many exhibits now. And I started taking the test on LMS. And you won't believe majority students could not attempt the full paper. They had to leave 30-30 marks of paper because the time got finished. That means previously the mocks which were given, they were not given in a time-bound manner. Now I need to make you all practice in a time-bound manner. Why? In those three hours, you need to understand the question also. You need to understand the exhibits also. The exhibits will be falling in different windows. You will have to take out the information from all the exhibits, bring it together and then frame a report. That's not going to be a very easy task. You will have to make your brain practice a lot of things together. Reading the exhibits, taking that information out, then putting it in the requirements because professional skill marks say communication specifically to be marked. So I need to communicate in a relevant manner to the point, not giving any extra information, not giving any daydreaming information. This has to be done in a limited time. So we need to practice that after test two. Let test one go in an unlimited manner because in that test, you will be learning what to write. Or even test two can be without time bound. But test 3 and test 4, I'll ensure that you are following the time limit on it. Else our preparation would not really be in the right direction. So this we will follow and I'll give you one additional mock for self-evaluation and I'll tell you what major pointers should be there in your answer. So practically you can always check from the solution. What about the theory? I'll mark the points which must be there in your answer. So you can check if you really wrote those points. If yes, give one mark. If you gave the next point, yes, give one mark. If there is something which is there in the answer and you didn't write it, so automatically you will not get credits for that. So I'll tell you how you will do the self-evaluation for that one mock. Two, I will, mock, I will evaluate them completely. Yes, Dave, yes, yes. I want you all to practice on a time-bound manner. And I'll give you the complete solution set Okay, yes, yes. Every Everything on the LMS. That's more needed because somehow I felt that I failed 
realizing this that the students are writing too much how come i realized this very late but okay you learn from your mistakes only and then uh, all of this at a course fee of inr 5000 nothing less than that nothing more than that just wanted to share this on the screen so that you don't feel that somebody would have been given a discount no everybody has paid this or is going to pay this so this is about our classes now comes the calendar. So how uh, will we go ahead? What are the dates? That is my AFM calendar. You have your exam on Friday, 6th December. That means anyhow, you need to close even your mocks by 3rd of December. So that after that, you are just working on the feedback which I gave on the mock. You are not studying anything new after 3rd December. Now, how will we go? We'll go ahead with these dates for eight problem sessions. Your first session will be on 29th. I have written who will be taking that session. So 29th September session is going to be taken by the faculty because it involves only the classes plus two, three exam kit questions. Which two, three exam kit questions? I'll tell you in four, five days. So what are you supposed to do for the first problem classes? Complete chapter number two three and six and two to three exam questions i'll tell you which one to do if you find any problem in these areas ask in the 29th september class if there is no problem then i'll ask the teacher to ask from you what you have studied Guys, did I got did I get disconnected? Guys, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so I was saying for the second class that is on 6th October, I will be taking that class. Why? Because your chapter 2, 3, 6, 4, 5, 7, these will be done. That means from chapter number 2 to 7 investment appraisal is there investment appraisal will get over you will be practicing some six seven exam kit questions and most likely you will face some technical problems here so here i need to come up to address in the same session then i'll start teaching you how to handle the theory questions related to investment appraisal so that now, whenever you start doing the exam kit questions, if any theory comes related to investment appraisal, you are doing them there and there. So then and there, you have to complete the theory also. This I'll teach you on 6th of October. For the one week, we'll give you to practice the complete exam kit related to these chapters. 13th October, whatever problem comes in, that will be obviously the calculative problem. These can be sorted by the faculty. How did this number come? Why they have used this rate and not that rate? So these questions he can handle. But where I have to tell you how to deal with the theory questions related to investment appraisal, that I'll take on 6th October. So the calendar is prepared like this only. Then next you will do chapter 12, 13, 14. Here again I will have to come first so that I prepare you for the theory part and then you practice the exam kit. So fifth class is related to exam kit. Before this, I'll tell you how to do the theory part of these chapters 12, 13 and 14. And then when the calculations and theory parts, you practice for a week, then you come on 27th October, you sit in front of the faculty and you get your problems solved. Am I clear how the plan is going on? Tell me. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Now, just one request. I have kept the last two classes for myself where chapter number 10 and 11 are there. These two chapters relate to foreign currency risk and interest rate risk. Now, these two are the most trouble areas for every student. I will be taking these sessions because of a simple reason, 
these two topics can be studied from only one teacher. It's not that you have to study only from me. The point is when you see my classes, do not go to any YouTuber or do not go to any CA final teacher to understand these concepts. The way of teaching interest rate risk and foreign currency risk, it is different for all teachers. So here you will be having a lot of trouble and it's better I handle that. I will make you practice some questions live also so that that gap also is filled. But do not try to discuss this with your friends also. That let's do, please you teach me interest rate risk. No, the way of thinking of every teacher, every student when he's handling this risk area is absolutely different. You all must have done your FM. There was this money market hedge. Money market hedge in detail is this. So money market hedging is taught by teachers every time in a different manner. Every teacher teaches it in a different manner. And if you try to take something from him, something from her, then something from open tuition, something from someone else, it's most likely going to be damaging for you. It will all be a khichdi in your mind. Not giving you any concept in your head. We have students from the last to last quarter who did wonders in AFM and secured more than 75 marks. Two, three students at least. And this time I'm expecting someone who is going to cross 80 plus. Anmol, I can declare it because I have checked his mocks. So wait for the result. Anmol is definitely going to be there under AFM. Pass that too with more than 70 marks. Everybody started crying when they started doing this. Ma'am, ye kya hai? If even one second my mind is out, the whole question is out. It needs hell lot of concentration. I have created some steps to do these questions. Please follow them. Do not try to come here and there. Meet, uh, I'm really sorry. In AFM, teaching FM is not possible. What can be done is we can give you the access for our FM batch. The basics you can see from there and then you can come back to this. Okay, beta, that's not possible. I'll tell you why. Because 90% students don't come from exemption. Then it's a wasted of time for them. And then another problem which comes up, is they have studied FM for, from someone else. If I again start teaching them FM, it's more likely going to be damaging. Okay, just do tag me. Tomorrow I will add you to my FM batch. See the classes there to see you will need only the investment appraisal part and plus this um, risk assessment part so i'll give you the access you can see from there otherwise if you just get confused how to access that also do give me a call okay 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 so this is the plan of action of the classes now the tests now you can see a small icon there Meet, uh, uh, once you register, you will be added to a WhatsApp group and in the WhatsApp group, I'm there. Okay. Okay. So uh, you see a small icon here. That means test number three is checked by me. So 13th October, whatever test you are going to give, that will be evaluated by me. Fourth is a system check test. Fifth, evaluation by me. Sixth is a system check test. Then seven and eight, they are checked by me. Why? Because at the end, I will be giving more discursive and report writing questions. That is why these checking wala tests are kept at the end. Because by that time, you would be proficient enough that you can handle a 50 marker question. That means one of the tests has got a 50 marker question? Yes. Yes. Chalo, itta to maine bata diya. Anyways, now mock. So mocks, you will get the mocks on 23rd. First mock, 29th, second mock. And you have your exam on 6th December. I will take five days to check your mocks because one mock takes at least, at least one hour to check. I have to read everything which you have written. Then I have to give a feedback on what you have written. Something which is incorrect. That I will have to just circle around. And plus I'll have to add on what should have been written. So the mock checking has to be detailed enough so that you understand where you lost marks that takes time so i'll take five days to check okay 
I have prepared the calendar like this also. You can take a printout of this. 29th, you will have session one. Then in October, this is how the calendar looks. Session two, I'll take. So you will see my icon here also. Test three, I will check. You will see this icon here. There is nothing under test two. That means it is a system checked test. This SYS means system checked. Test one, system checked. Test five, I will check. Session four is my session. At least don't miss my sessions. There may be a situation that you may not be having a problem. Let's suppose it's session six. You do not have a problem. You can opt for not attending the class. But when it is my class, my class will have something to teach and something critical to teach. Okay, so don't miss my tests. Don't miss my classes. And this is December. Okay, now before I take your questions, let me take you to the LMS also. How the classes will be accessed? How will the classes look? Yes, yes, Astha. It will be, the calendar will be shared with you all on the LMS also. And I will share this with you all on WhatsApp also. So that you can download and then you can take a print. Okay. Go to our institute's website, value-ed.in. Here you need to log in. I have already logged in as a student. Go to my courses. Okay. I am a student of all the papers. Go to AFM. So it's pretty simple. Number one, you see the orientation for September exam. Why? Because your orientation is happening today. By midnight, Zoom will give me the class recording. I will process it, reduce down its size and then will upload it on the LMS. So tomorrow, by tomorrow, 12 noon, you can expect here your orientation. Then what is this PER, POs link? It's nothing. We learning partners, the platinum learning partners have a condition to give the PER and objectives linked. So it's just a document which ACC asks us to upload. Nothing has to be done on it. AFM planner for September. Now you have your own planner. Introduction to AFM. If you want, you can see. Otherwise, I have already introduced you about AFM on every area. Then special session for changes in September 2022 exam. Nothing has to be seen. I'll delete it from here. Professional skills for 20 marks were introduced in September 2022. So just wanted to ensure that the students are confident that the changes have been introduced. Now I have told that in the orientation. So this session is not needed now. Okay, Arpita is asking, we will have access to the test for 20. Yes, yes, Arpita, the same system, 24 hours, because the students may be working. So we need 24 hours of bandwidth. Okay. Now here with AFM, you can see the chapters in sequence. Which sequence is this? This is Kaplan's study text sequence. So whatever is chapter one in Kaplan study text, it's chapter one here. You simply have to click on it. This is chapter one, part one. This is chapter one, part two. And the notes, notes are downloadable. Download them. Download all the chapters notes. Take their printout and create a spiral bind for that. So the spiral bind will be very helpful because you need to study. You need to write in between whenever you feel like that. Okay, this point is critical for me. See, for a mentor, we cannot create notes in a lot of detail. Why? Because another Kaplan study text will be created. Nidhi study text will be created. Different students have a different learning capacity, retention capacity. For someone, one point may be irrelevant. For other one, the same point may be relevant. So if it is relevant for you, better you write it rather than me writing and giving it to everyone. Because then if notes become too bulky, it will most likely demotivate you. That's why. So keep a margin that whenever you feel, do write on the notes. Do additions on it. Then this is chapter number two in two different parts. Okay. With the uh, blended session, what feedback I have got from students is they keep my videos at one and a half speed. <laughs> See. So the video will start. 
Here are the settings. You can increase the speed to 1.25, 1.5. I think my network is not doing well. Hmm. This is my network's problem, seems like. Guys, I'm connected, no? Yes, ma'am. So this is my network. Everything is just rolling around. Okay, finally this came up. Welcome to the second session for chapter number three, international operation. Okay, just increase its speed. If you feel like that I am going quite slow in the class, quickly, quickly, quickly with increased speed, go for it. And whatever you feel like that the notes have got a key term, underline and highlight it immediately. So these are the chapters going line wise. I have given you the target with chapter to do when. Now this exam kit library, what is this? I've recorded 15, 16 questions. These are the questions of the exam kit, which I have already recorded. So whenever you are doing the exam kit questions, number. first practice them so that you will get an idea how to go about these questions. So first you have to see these questions, then you start practicing. Hello ma'am. I said my network is not really good and the network completely went off. Wow. <laughs> okay, anyways. Network change was detected. I know network change was detected. Okay. Okay, so these are the tests which you will see. So see, now, now the network change has happened. I have shifted to the other router. This is accessible during a particular timeline only. Why? Because it will be open only what we have fixed for the class. Okay? So here for the class or for the test. So you have a test on, let's suppose 5th October, one of the tests will open only on 5th October. Test one will open only on 5th October, not before that. It will be open for 24 hours. Anytime you can attempt it. I have kept some tests during the weekdays also. I do understand you may be very busy. You may be trapped with your office work. But then the gap between the tests was not getting managed when I was not taking them on the weekdays. Every test on weekends is not getting doable business for you all. Because then weekends you have your sessions also. And when the session happens then you will be preparing for your test, not for uh, the class or you will not be practicing. And what I want is you practice more as compared to um, waiting for the test. So better to give the test when you are uh, in your weekdays. Okay, am I clear on that? Guys, am I clear on that? Hmm? Okay. Right, so we have here the routine test, mock test papers, they will all now happen on the LMS. New additions to the syllabus, nothing has to be done here and problem sessions, I'll erase them. Okay, so just wanted to show them how this LMS is accessible. It's no rocket science. But yes, one thing here to highlight that the content is easy, but you need to practice it regularly and consistently. Unfortunately, what will happen is when you will practice and complete investment appraisal after 10 days, you will forget that. So it's better to keep on practicing again and again. After 10 days, when you feel that you are forgetting the previous chapters, pick up one question, practice it. It won't go out of your mind then. And the tests will play a good role in this. You will be in the revision mode always. Okay. And as uh, Meeth has highlighted that he is coming from an exemption model he doesn't know about fm if anybody else is also facing that even if you are not coming from an exemption model if you are not able to recall any of the concepts of fm 
please do let me know. I'll add you to my FM group. Okay? But in AFM, starting from FM, that's quite difficult to happen. I just thought I should do that, but then I realized I cannot do that because it will be a clash of the same concepts delivered by different teachers. So it's better that I give access of my FM batch to whoever needs it. Okay? Yes, Andarya, that's okay. That's okay. Just, uh, just let me know. You all can tag me on your group. Just let me know. I'll give you the access of the F FM batch. Okay? Now, let's get back to the questions. Any questions you all have? Is everything clear or I messed it up because I was not talking in Hindi? <laughs> hmm. Seems I messed it up. Okay. Okay. Asta is saying clear. Rishav is also saying clear. Okay. Okay. So, uh, if there is any doubt, no, later on also, no, you can always write a message to me. I'll try to answer them. But if I'm not, not answering for a certain number of hours, please do consider that I may be busy in recordings or preparing any tests because when I'm studying or preparing any content, I try to keep my phone away. Okay. So in that case, if I'm not responding, please do not consider ki fees li and she ran away. Not like that. <laughs> when I'm preparing a test, on an average, one 10 to 15 marks of test creation takes good four to five hours of time. So when I'm doing that, I keep my phone away from myself. So it's not that I'm running off anywhere, just that I'm doing something. Or when I'm recording, that time also I keep my phone away because then automatically when any message comes, my eyes leave the camera and go to the phone. So that uh, disconnect happens. So I keep my phone away that time also. Okay, clear? Clear. Uh, Arpita, AFM most likely, yes, is going to be available each quarter because uh, students are finding it very difficult to adapt to AFM from any tutor. So every quarter we are getting 15 to 20 students of AFM. I thought this quarter I'll take some rest, but already Minakshi ma'am told me that ma'am already 12 to 13 enquiries are there. That means students are looking for you. So I had to take it. So any which ways it is going to go every quarter. Okay. Anything else? Uh, Ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ma'am, actually my uh, doubt is not there, but uh, I want to ask like I, you said now for if you are from exemption one, so you want to see FM videos. So you yeah. said any two chapters videos I have to see now. Only yes. not, not full FM now. No, 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 not whole, not whole FM, Meet because there are many things which I have taught from scratch, but there are certain things which have a connect from FM. Okay, ma'am. Okay, so... Uh... That you will message me in chat, no? Yes, I'll tell you. Okay, ma'am, no problem, no worries. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, okay. Anything else, guys? Anything else? All set? I still, still couldn't get the student who wanted the orientations and classes in English. <laughs> who was the one who wrote that message on my YouTube channel? Acha Dev. Okay, okay. Okay, Dev. Okay, okay. I confirmed it from everyone that if there is really someone that I need to talk in English, but if uh, there is nobody and somebody was just making fun of me on YouTube, <laughs> then... <laughs> Okay, okay. No worries, no worries. Uh, I'm talking about the exams in each quarter. Are we able to attempt it? Uh, Arpita, I'm still not clear as to what are you asking. Exams in each quarter. You can give... Uh, you can give an AFM every quarter. In every quarter, that's... Uh, the paper has to be booked. Ma'am, actually, I've heard from some people that uh, professional level exams are not, not available in each quarter. So basically, uh, it's like either in March or June, you have to give the exams. I have shown the date sheet. My goodness. Uh, actually, ma'am, I joined the class late. <laughs> Achha, okay, okay, okay. Nee, nee, no worries, but uh, I got shocked not on your thing. See, this is your date sheet. 
सेप्टेम्बर में माई स्टूडेंट गेव दी एग्जाम जून के पास रिजल्ट आई हैव शोन इन दी क्लास सो नॉट ट्राइंग टू से दैट यू आर नॉट हैविंग एन इन्फॉर्मेशन जस्ट ट्राइंग टू प्रूव यू दैट एग्जाम्स आर हैपनिंग एवरी क्वार्टर ओके ओके मैम थैंक यू ठीक है डोंट वरी वो हर बार होंगे ओके अर्पिता यू हैव रीच्ड पी लेवल uh mom actually my fm exam i'm not sure about whether they are going to consider my exam or not okay. but still i'm preparing for the fourth exams but arpita then sbr is a better choice you should start with sbr rather than afm i, I think i'll have to revise okay. the whole fr uh, like okay. the recently i have studied got fm it. and pm got it got it you you recently did your fm so want to crack afm yes okay. ठीक है एनीवेज ठीक है वो आई हैव टॉट यू आई नो यू विल बी एबल टू हैंडल दोस प्रोफेशनल मार्क्स ठीक है दैट्स ओके देव देव डू यू अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी बिकॉज माय रिस्क मैनेजमेंट पार्ट इज इन हिंदी विल यू बी एबल टू मैनेज दैट सी वी हैव अ पॉलिसी वी कैन रिफंड योर फी विद इन सेवन डेज बिकॉज पोस्ट दैट देन जीएसटी गेट्स डिपॉजिटेड टू द डिपार्टमेंट देन वी कैन नॉट रिफंड एनी फी टू एनी स्टूडेंट okay just some set of chapters are in hindi because i there i thought that probably delivering the concept is uh, more important as compared to me talking in english okay okay cool <laughs> okay okay done done so i hope all the questions are answered if there is still any confusion and you have already joined the classes then you can write to me on the whatsapp group tag me don't write individual messages i have got hundreds of messages in every hour so individual on my personal window i'll miss out but on the groups i see the messages so you can tag me ask me if there is any confusion going on and if you are not registered yet then you can ask any of the confusions to the team they will be happy to help you okay so abhi kuch yaad nahi aa raha hai that's okay you can ask later on also chali guys so we'll catch up for the first problem class i'll share the calendar on the whatsapp group just after the class and we'll catch up on no you will catch up with the faculty on 29th of september so immediate basis from tomorrow itself start your study journey okay okay guys in every week three three chapters no yes yes okay, okay. and just the classes plus two three exam kit questions so the major exercises watching the classes practicing the question which i have done in the class and additional three exam kit questions that's it nothing else to be done okay okay ma'am got okay. it okay okay guys then bye bye good night take care and happy starting okay bye bye ma'am thank you bye 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 ma'am thank you